I'm not sure if it's going to be that motivational. I mean, right now we were looking into this. You know, there's an abortion pill right now that one can get from the FDA, and they loosened the rules to make it easier to get it last December. And so if you're in Mississippi and they outlaw abortion, which is one of the states that's got this so-called trigger law where they're going to restrict abortion probably entirely if this decision comes down as we expect, um, you can still get this abortion pill. It's only workable till the 10th week of pregnancy. Maybe not. Maybe the Mississippi law is going to say, well, you can't mail that into Mississippi, but women will find ways around that from the affected states. I just, I'm not sure it's going to be the same as it was when you had to go to the clinic, you had to pass the protesters, you had to have a surgical procedure. I don't know. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Look, I was into it when they passed a law in Connecticut saying birth control was illegal and birth control clinics uh, could be outlawed. And the Supreme Court in Griswold versus Connecticut reversed that. And that became the stepping stone, obviously, to Roe versus Wade. And although uh, Alito said that, no, this opinion only affects abortion, doesn't affect other things like gay rights or presumably uh, the right to use birth control, you never know what states will do. and, and, and many state legislatures are out of sync with the public, are mm. way the right in some states and will vote for as much of a ban as you can get. But I hope you're right. I think you're probably right that it won't have the same impact it would have had in 1973 if abortion were not ha- uh, made a constitutional right back then. I do think there are ways around back alley abortions. But, you know, there's some history in South America that does suggest that there still are back alley abortions and pills, uh, uh, you know, they have to be known to people. They have to get to them. And again, it's going to affect the poorest and the least That's well true. educated. That's absolutely true. The poor uh, women are the ones who who suffer the most when it comes to this kind of thing. But, you know, Bill Barr's response to that would be that's federalism. Welcome to federalism. It's not a constitutional right. It's not in the Constitution. You can absolutely go petition for a constitutional amendment if you think you can get the support for that. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with what your state says. And if you don't like what your state says, there's always the power of your feet. Well, you know, you can say that and you can say that about gay rights and gay marriage. You can say that about gun control. And suddenly we federalized and made a constitutional right out of the right to bear arms. That one's in there. Uh, That one's explicitly in there. That's not like abortion. It's like abortion because it's in there in language that's ambiguous. The language says uh, it relates it directly to militias. And uh, and there was a history of precedent of 150 years saying that there was no private right to bear arms. And that precedent was overruled. You can apply it to Brown versus Board of Education. Brown versus Board of Education is not a good decision. Logically, it uses a lot of empirical data. That's highly questionable, but nobody's going to reverse Brown versus Board. Mm -hmm. And if you had asked the framers of the 14th that wrote equal protection, do you think equal protection means that a black man can marry a white woman? He'd say, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. You're nuts. It means that a black kid could go to school with a white kid. You're out of your mind. They would never have passed. Well, I think you're right about that. I think you're right. But uh, but there's some there's some there's a logical appeal to what somebody like Scalia would say to that, an, an originalist, which is, okay, now, n- no one's saying those are good things. What we're saying is go get a constitutional amendment. There's a there's nope. a nifty way built right in where you can get amendments and you can get these things made into constitutional rights if that's what you want. But we're, we shouldn't be reading things into this that aren't there. That's not Scalia's answer. Let me tell you why. Scalia came to my class in criminal law <laughs> the first year he was on the Supreme Court. And I put that test question in directly, and there's a tape uh, of it. And he didn't give the answer that you might think, amend the Constitution to give us uh, Brown versus Board of Education. He said originalism isn't perfect. It has problems. And Brown versus Board of Education is one of those problems. I can't uh, answer your question about Brown versus Board of Education. But it's better, he said, like democracy and maybe the worst of all the systems. Mm. But he said that about originalism. He didn't say it was perfect. And he didn't say it would solve Brown versus Board of Education. And my friends who are pro uh, a right of abortion say the same thing about this. It may not be explicitly in the Constitution. Neither is birth control. It's under the right of privacy. It's a living Constitution. The argument is. And therefore, it should uh, 
I'll cover abortion, at least some abortion, as well as birth control. But, Alan, you you can't say that Roe versus Wade. And look, I'm not taking a position on abortion one way or the other. There are certain things as a reporter I choose not to reveal. And my position on that as a person, as an American, as a woman is my own. But um, I, I there's no question. I look at Roe and it's it's like it's. It just looks like a pile of trash knitted together to me. It's like the the trimester system. These judges making stuff up about viability. They they decided to play God and just make up fake lines, which is why it was struck down in large part in Casey, except for its core, which was the fundamental right. How do you distinguish that from gay marriage and gay rights? The framers of our Constitution never would have permitted gay marriage or gay rights. The framers of the 14th Amendment never would have permitted it. Both of the right of privacy and personal choice and and bodily integrity and all of that. And I don't think very many people today, I hope, don't want to overrule the right of gay people to live their lives uh, uh, free of governmental constraint. The thing that concerns me is conservatives are supposed to want to keep the government out of the bathroom, out of the bedroom, Mm -hmm. out of the bed, out of the hospital. um, And yet. More and more conservatives want uh, the government to intrude into private decisions like abortion and control and marriage and all of that. Uh, and 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 so, uh, you know, there's hypocrisy and also I don't think there's a big push on the GOP side to get rid of gay marriage. I do think there's a big push on abortion because that's seen as a fundamental issue of death and life. They, I mean, you, I don't know how to explain it to you. You're a religious man, you know. I agree with that. I think there's a big difference between abortion. I think, look, I wrote critically of Roe versus Wade when it was decided. I knew and it. I hear 2000 in my book on the Supreme Court that uh, uh, Roe versus Wade was a great favor to Republicans. It, it, um, it people who were pro choice Republicans into pro-life Republicans, people like first president Bush and, and Rockefeller Republicans. It helped eliminate the, moderate wing of the Republican Party and turn it more to to the right. It's a very complicated factor. And the one thing Alito did get right, and he was right about this, and that is unlike Brown versus Board, this decision in Roe didn't stop the politics and didn't persuade people. It didn't have an impact on public opinion. The public opinion is as divided today as 1973. Black Rifle Coffee Company is a veteran-founded company serving premium coffee to people who love America. They develop their explosive roast profiles with the same mission focus learned as military members serving this great country of ours. And in 2021, Black Rifle donated over 100,000 bags of coffee, that's 2.1 million cups of coffee, to first responders, law enforcement, and active duty military members. So you know that with every purchase you make, Black Rifle will give back. Black Rifle Coffee imports high-quality coffee beans from Colombia and Brazil, and they roast them five days a week at their facilities in Manchester, Tennessee, and Salt Lake City, Utah, which means you get the freshest coffee possible no matter where you live. The best way to enjoy Black Rifle's freedom-filled coffee is with the Black Rifle Coffee Club. When you join the club, your brew of choice is roasted, packaged, and shipped free to your door on your schedule. You can buy it at BlackRifleCoffee.com, Use the code MK at checkout for 20% off your purchase and your first coffee club order. BlackRifleCoffee.com slash MK. Use that code MK at checkout. Black Rifle Coffee is America's coffee. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.